Hello everybody, it's Mrs. Pound and we are working on chapter 6.3 about light. So today's topic is section 635 on other forms of radiation. Remember we had this talk before um, in class about the fact that the word radiation we usually think of as being harmful. But when I say radiation, I'm referring to any type of wave that is found on the electromagnetic spectrum. So um, I'm talking about radio waves, I'm talking about gamma waves, and everything in between. So our objectives today are going to be to summarize the different forms of radiation and describe uses of the different forms of radiation. So the first type I want to talk about are infrared ray waves, and this is an electromagnetic wave with slightly greater wavelengths and lower frequencies than red light. We experience this wave as heat. That's why I have the fire in the background. We have actually two types of electromagnetic waves here. We have the visible light, and we also have infrared, which is heat. And one thing we need to know is that all objects give off heat. So all objects emit infrared waves. There's always a heat transfer of some kind between all objects in the universe. And we have been able to develop a science called thermog thermography uh, using this. And so what you have here is you have a camera that detects infrared and changes it into colors that we can see. And over here, it shows you the color range. Blue would be cooler. The closer we get to kind of this uh, cream color, the hotter it is. It's almost even white. And so... Uh, thermography is used for a lot of things. Um, we can take thermograms of the human body to see where there's inflammation in the human body. Uh, you can use them to see where heat is leaking out of your house and you might have to better insulate. Firefighters use it to see if all of a fire is put out in a house and to see if there are any hot spots that are left that they need to put out. They can also use them if they have it in their mass, they can use it to find people in a building when they cannot see through the smoke. And helicopters can use uh, thermograms at night to find missing people uh, because they will see that hot spot in the area of where that person's body is. So very useful technology. Now the amount of radiation given off by an object is determined by its temperature. As I showed you in the thermogram, uh, there are different colors that correlate to the different temperatures. There's also ultraviolet or UV waves. The, this is an electromagnetic wave with slightly shorter wavelengths, slightly higher frequencies, and more energy than violet light. And I have sunglasses in the background because we need to protect ourselves from this type of radiation. Uh, it does cause sunburns and it does cause cataracts. So wearing sunglasses is a good idea. It also, though, is not all that bad. It does trigger the production of vitamin D in human cells. So uh, sunlight, getting some UV exposure is good for all of us. Now, we do have a natural shield around the Earth, okay, in the atmosphere that protects life on Earth by filtering out excess UV radiation. That is our ozone layer. And our ozone layer uh, in past years has become depleted, and one of the beliefs is that it's been deleted by depleted, excuse me, by CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons. So next to this bullet point and ozone layer, I want you to draw a circle, write CFCs in it, and put in a cross through it, like to say no CFCs. Um, it has been shown in the lab that CFCs react with ozone. And so CFCs have been banned by over 200 countries. And it does appear that the hole in the ozone is sh shrinking. It's also a seasonal thing though. So some scientists are just thinking it's more of a seasonal thing, 
but it does appear that the hole is shrinking because of the band of CFCs. There are also x-rays and x-rays are very helpful for us. An x-ray is an electromagnetic wave with slightly shorter wavelengths and higher frequencies than ultraviolet rays. And you probably all have had x-rays taken at the dentist or maybe you've had a suspected bo broken bone. And what this does is bones appear white in color on x-ray film because the dense bone absorbs the x-ray radiation. And and it goes through the soft tissues. And so we are able to use this. Um, now we don't want to overuse it because it can cause cancer. And that's why a lot of times you are, when you're uh, having x-rays taken, a lead vest or apron or something is put over you because lead will not allow x-rays to go through. So they put lead on you. That's why it's so heavy um, to protect you. And the last type of radiation I want to talk about are gamma rays. These easily penetrate objects because they have a tremendous amount of energy because they have the shortest wavelengths and the highest frequencies. Um, are, we are protected by these on Earth by actually our magnetic field. Okay, and so that protects us. And gamma rays are given off at nuclear power plants. And so around the nuclear core where the radioactive material is, it will be protected with lead and other materials because gamma rays can actually go through two meters of concrete. So very high energy. Now we do use this to treat cancer. So radiation treatment uses gamma rays, but uh, it can also cause radiation burns. So we have to be very careful with it um, because it can be very damaging. So our objectives today were to summarize the different forms of radiation and describe uses of the different forms of radiation. So don't forget your five questions and I'll be back with more about life.